Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. Hope you ate a lot of food and spent some great time with friends and family. And you got at least one thing on your list that you wanted. Anyways, today's video is really an informational video to help those folks who are looking at purchasing their very first RV. I'm going to start this series on travel trailers. Then we'll move to fifth wheels and then we'll move to different classes of motorhomes. But the reason why I wanna start this with travel trailers is because they tend to be the least expensive. At the same time, you are gonna have a huge variety of not just manufacturers, but also floor plans to choose from. A lot of folks get really confused on how much they should spend, what features they should look for, what type of vehicle they feel is gonna be best suited to tow a first RV or first travel trailer. And I'm gonna to try to address those in this specific video. Then when we move on to fifth wheels and motorhomes, I'll try to stick to the same type of talking points about what really is gonna be the best for those specific buyers looking to get into their first fifth wheel or motorhome. But I am on my way to Colonia Del Rey RV so I can actually show you some of the RVs that I'm talking about and give you a better understanding of what you might wanna look for in your first travel trailer. So I'll be right back, hang tight. Now these are definitely not entry level. The Cardinal is definitely among the higher end of Forest River's lineup. For the Forest River brand name, it's gonna be their top end. And as you can see, it actually has the Moride steps that I recently installed on our fifth wheel. Today what we're gonna be looking at are entry level travel trailers. Basically the type of travel trailer you would wanna consider if you have a half ton pickup truck all the way up to a three quarter ton pickup truck and even in some cases a dually or a 350 single rear wheel truck. Now, what I want to do real quick is walk through the differences between different types of towable or travel trailer type RVs. First of all, let's talk about the different sidewall constructions. So one of the first things you'll notice is that you have the choice generally between a fiberglass sidewall or an aluminum sidewall. An aluminum sidewall is going to have a wood frame backing it. So underneath this is going to be a wood frame and generally it's gonna be a bat style or residential style fiberglass insulation. On your fiberglass wall, you're generally going to have an aluminum frame with foam insulation. So it'll be very similar to those cheap little styrofoam coolers, but it will be sprayed and filled or just packed into the walls between the exterior and the interior wall. Don't expect travel trailers to be extremely well insulated against extreme heat or extreme cold. A lot of folks realize when they take these things out to areas that are really cold that the inside of their RV gets pretty frigid. There are ways to help combat that, but the reality behind owning a travel trailer is that your sidewalls are gonna inherently be thinner and you're not gonna have a very sealed cabin. Basically, there's a lot of areas where air can get in, where air can escape, and they just don't hold temperature extremely well. So you're gonna have to rely on your furnace as well as your air conditioning units to really adjust the temperature inside your RV to whatever's gonna be comfortable for you. So you wanna make sure that you get an RV that is equipped with a sufficient cooling or heating system to work in areas that you may take your travel trailer. So now let's talk storage. The storage in a travel trailer is gonna be significantly less or smaller than that of a fifth wheel. Some of them will have some pretty sizable front storage areas. This area right here looks to be about three and a half feet wide by maybe a foot and a half tall. And then it runs all the way across the front. So this is a reasonable size storage. However, it's not gonna be nearly the size of say a fifth wheel. So just keep in mind when you get into a travel trailer, you are gonna be a little limited on the amount of overall storage that you have. Plus anything that you add to the front storage compartment is going to add to the tongue weight of the trailer. So it's gonna put additional weight on the back of your pickup truck. One thing you wanna keep an eye on is that the different brands, makes and models of travel trailers oftentimes will have some really nice benefits associated with them and some of them won't. In this particular case, you get a really nice step system on this travel trailer. This specific travel trailer is the Forest River Vibe 268 RKS. Let's go inside. 
This specific floor plan is a rear kitchen mid living room model. Has a nice radius ceiling to it. So the ceiling has a nice curve. It's all ducted AC, as you can see. Two reclining sofas, as well as a sofa sleeper. And then of course, your table turns into a bed as well. In my opinion, this specific floor plan would be ideal for a couple without children. Maybe you have the occasional guest that comes along with you that can utilize the sleeper bed or the dining room table bed. But a floor plan like this is really great for a couple because it's not going to sacrifice space for beds. It's basically going to give you a really good floor plan that a couple can stay in and enjoy without having to, you know, utilize much of the space for a bunkhouse. Now looking at the price on this particular one. This one has a suggested retail after freight of $40,120. But as you can see, the asking price is $29,268. And what I like about this specific dealership, Colonia Del Rey, is that they actually include freight in the price, the MSRP here. So it's not one of those after charges that you see on the paperwork and you wonder where it popped up from. As you can see, it has a nice flat screen TV stereo system, basically all the amenities that you should expect in the unit at this price range. Again, really nice unit for a couple. Taking a look at the master bedroom area. Now, one thing that you want to be aware of is it is kind of rare to have a king size bed in a travel trailer. Only a few models have one. They take up a significant portion of the front or it's on a side slide out. This specific unit has a queen size bed, which is pretty standard in travel trailers. Generally, you're going to have a little pocket right here that flips up, and they kind of consider it a laundry chute, so you can put a basket underneath there. We never really used our travel trailers. I mean, honestly, we didn't really want to drop laundry down into the storage compartment below because we were using it for storage, but that goes directly into the storage compartment at the front of this unit. This unit has a nice size bathroom. Most travel trailers are going to sacrifice bathroom space, especially if you have a bunkhouse. Usually they'll give you one or maybe one and a half bathrooms if you have a bunkhouse, but that specific bathroom is going to have a standard compact RV shower tub combo, and it can be very difficult to fit in. Looks like you have about three feet of space from the front entrance here to the back. And then when you're inside, you just want to make sure that your head clears the roof, that you have plenty of room to actually take a shower. Recommend closing the door and just seeing how much room you have inside. Plastic toilets are pretty standard on travel trailers. You're pretty much only seeing porcelain toilets in fifth wheels. This specific model does have a plastic toilet. If you have the ability to find one with a porcelain toilet, I would definitely opt for one with a porcelain toilet. And this one has two entries into the bathroom. So this is the main entry that you would use to enter the bathroom, whereas the other entry is from the master bedroom, which is nice. Now, one thing I wanna point out, even though the main air conditioning unit ducks into the master bedroom, this unit only has one air conditioning unit, and that's it right out there in the living area. The master bedroom area has one vent that comes into it, as well as a sunroof access that you could install a second unit in technically, but if the vehicle's wired at 30 amps, you would have to either switch out to a 50 amp unit, which would be very, very expensive to do to your RV, or have a second plug for your AC that you install up front, which isn't very convenient. Basically, this type of unit to me would be very difficult to keep cool in a very hot climate area. And in a very cool climate area, it may be okay, but you really have to see where all your furnace vents are. Now, I wanted to take a quick walk through of the surveyor, which is also by Forest River. And you can see this one has a traditional fold up stairs that kind of fold into the side of the RV, and these are made of steel. Definitely a downgrade over the solid step stairs that were on the previous one that we just looked at. An example of that is when you step on it, you can just see how they flex and move, and they ha kind of have that springboard feel when you walk on them. This is the 33KRLOK. This is a real nice floor plan. It's a rear living room setup. 
very similar to what you might see in a fifth wheel. Still has the radius ceiling on it, which is basically a curved ceiling. Has a larger TV, much larger TV. Rear sofa, theater seating. Pretty much the same style stainless refrigerator. This is a residential style. It's not gonna be your gas electric. So it has an inverter built into the RV to help power it. This specific unit does not have a dinette that can convert into a bed. Though the back sofa on this couch can fold out into a almost king size bed. Has a really nice island with solid surface countertop. Now even though it's solid surface, that does not mean that it may not be wood laminate. Many of these are going to have Corian, many might have a granite material, but this specific one is going to have a laminated material that's kind of made to replicate granite. This one carries an MSRP of 47747 They're asking 35232 So it's about $5,000 more than the one that we showed you previously. Has a nice stove area. Be sure if you're a heavy cooker that you find out if a stove this size is going to work for you, mainly because all of your pot handles will have to kind of point out this way as you don't have a lot of room here on the sides. Secondly, this isn't an actual tile material. It's more of a peel and stick um, paper type material that is just made to accent the kitchen area. Don't expect that to be a real tile or real stone. It does have a nice stainless steel microwave to it. This is not a convection microwave, it is a standard microwave. One thing that this unit does have, though, is quite a bit of counter space for a travel trailer. Generally the type of kitchen you would see in a smaller fifth wheel. As I mentioned before, this unit doesn't have a dining room table that converts into a bed or a booth style, but it does have your more traditional style dining room table with a fold-up extension here. I prefer this more, even though it doesn't have the ability to sleep anybody, I prefer it simply because it makes the RV look better, it makes it look more homey in my opinion, and when we got our fifth wheel we specifically wanted this type of dinette in our fifth wheel, specifically because it made it feel more comfortable. But we did sacrifice some sleeping area because of that, so keep that in mind. You always want to keep in mind how many people may be staying with you or traveling with you. It's great if it's comfortable for you as the owner, but you also want your guests to be comfortable. Moving into the restroom. Now this restroom is about the same size as the other one. It is nice. It has a plastic toilet, so it does not have a porcelain toilet. If you can find one with a porcelain toilet or upgrade yours to a porcelain toilet, I would highly recommend it. Huge upgrade in this model is going to be the fact it has a king size bed. This is a pretty big deal. Not a lot of travel trailers are gonna have the ability to support a king size bed. I know some models do. This specific one does, and it's on a side slide. And the nice thing about this one is the slide area is actually pretty tall. So this one also has a really nice front cap, which gives you a nice closet area. A lot of travel trailers are lacking in this specific area. As you can see, the front storage area is pretty significant. It has a nice hanging rod that goes all the way across. Overall, it's a nice master bedroom. Much nicer than most of them that I've seen. Really nice perk is this one has twin AC units. So you have your own master bedroom AC unit as well as a ducted unit that runs into the master bedroom from the main unit in the living room. Speakers in the ceiling are pretty common. And here's the other side of the closet. On this unit, if you wanted to mount a TV, you would mount it on this wall area right here because all your connections are right there. You have a thermostat for your master bedroom, which is kind of rare. In most cases, your front AC are going to have direct controls on the AC itself. This specific one actually has a thermostat tied to it. Again, this is a really, really nice master bedroom for a travel trailer, especially because you get the king size bed and quite a bit of space between the bed and the dresser. And that is because it has a slide out for the master bedroom. So now let's make our way back into the living room area of this one. I would say that if you're looking for a fifth wheel for a couple that has a three quarter ton truck or is in the market for a three quarter ton truck and up, this would be a really good one to look at. If you have guests that might travel with you or kids, this one's gonna be better for you than the one that we previously looked at because this one's gonna have almost a king size bed that folds out out of the couch. You do want to keep in mind, though, you're not going to have a lot of privacy for anybody who sleeps on that couch because it's part of the living room. You can also see that it has dual floor vents for heat. 
So even though you may be sacrificing the step system to get into your travel trailer on this specific unit, you are getting a much, much better equipped unit in general. This one does cost more. It is a significantly larger RV or longer. It's 33 feet. But there are a lot of reasons why this would be the type of RV that you would probably prefer. And quite frankly, one that you might regret not getting if you opted for the other model. Now if we take a look at the sticker on the side of this one, the dry weight of this unit is 7,981 pounds. It can carry 1,546 pounds of cargo. That's not bad for a travel trailer. So this specific unit isn't that heavy. When everything's said and done, you're going to be right at about 9,500 pounds. Now this one has an outside kitchen. Not only does it have a gas grill and a refrigerator, it's actually a pretty good size refrigerator. It's not too small. Nice surface here as well as some cabinetry up top. What I don't see is an outside sink, which actually comes in really handy. This one also has an outside bicycle rack, which is really nice. It comes in really handy. The finish they put on these isn't that great though, and tends to start rusting pretty quickly, as is evident with the one that we have. You can kind of see some areas right here. Maybe when you get it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to hit it with a really good coat of gloss, rust-oleum, or something just to add some extra protection, simply because you can see right around where all the welds are that it starts rusting pretty quickly. One of the reasons why this coach is so big on the inside is because it does have opposing slides. This side comes out as well as the other side, which gives you a pretty sizable living room. If you want more space inside of your travel trailer, that's definitely a feature you want to look out for. Now let's take a look at your connection bay. This is interesting because all your connections are directly on the side wall of the coach. With fifth wheels, it's generally going to be in a compartment or a door that's inside of your storage area. But on travel trailers, they just put the connections right on the side city water connection, black tank flush, which is really nice and actually kind of rare with travel trailers, as well as your cable satellite hookups, and all your sewer connections will be right down here on the bottom. And because this specific coach has two AC units, you're going to get 50 amp connection, which is going to give you the ability to connect everything or have everything running simultaneously. You'll be able to run both your AC units, your refrigerator, your microwave, basically everything that needs power would be more than adequate to run off of this unit because of the 50 amp connection. That is a major reason to look for a coach with dual AC units because you're going to have the higher amperage connection already wired in. Now regarding tires. This specific unit has Castle Rock ST tires. These are trailer tires and they are radials. I would replace these probably after about two to 3,000 miles, if not sooner. There are a few brands on the market that are really good. I know the Goodyear Endurance Series is supposed to be a phenomenal tire made in America, as well as the Goodyear Cargo Series, which is actually designed for like sprinter vans and things like that. Those are supposed to be really good tires. And they have a few Chinese brand tires, kind of like the Saloon, where they're all steel rated. They're really designed for like gooseneck trailers and things like that, but I've heard they work very well on travel trailers as well. This is one area that can be very expensive if you have a blowout or if a tire tears apart because it'll destroy everything underneath it in this area of the RV. This specific unit even has an upgraded equalizer as part of the rear suspension. So that is kind of rare on a travel trailer. Most of the time you're just going to have one of those triangle shaped steel equalizers, but this one gives you an upgraded equalizer. The bolts are not wet bolts, so I would generally recommend to get those replaced after about two or 3,000 miles when you get them serviced with new equalizer bolts that will give you the ability to grease them from the outside. They simply have a grease zerk built into the end of it, and it makes maintaining it a lot easier. So I wanna add one final note to this video before we wrap it up. The things you wanna look for in your first travel trailer, whether you have a family or not, in my opinion, are gonna be the fiberglass sidewall. I prefer that, you get more value out of it when it comes time to sell it. It's not a make or break thing for me, but it is one that's significant enough that I'll specifically hunt out one with fiberglass sidewalls versus one without. I would look for some type of upgraded step system if they have it available. You may have to opt for that if you're having one custom built, but in most cases, they're probably not going to have the upgraded steps. They're more than likely going to have those steel steps. Also make sure that there's some method to protect the propane tanks from the elements, as well as make sure that you get full propane tanks whenever you buy your unit, as well as a deep cycle battery. 
Most RV dealerships are going to include a battery as well as fill up your propane tanks. If the one you're dealing with does not or they try to throw it in as an extra thing to try to close the sale, I would generally recommend you tell them that you're only talking to RV dealerships that just include that as part of the deal. Expect that you're going to have a power jack on the front of your RV or your travel trailer. This is pretty much standard on any 25 foot and greater RV or travel trailer on the market. Talk to your dealership about the tires. See if they have a way to upgrade your tires before you even take it off the lot. Maybe they might charge you a little bit more, but if they can throw some Goodyear Endurance on, if they can throw some Goodyear Cargo or a higher-end tire on your travel trailer before you leave the dealership, that's definitely something that is worth it as well as worth the extra time and effort because it just gives you a little bit more peace of mind whenever you're traveling that you're less likely to have a blowout. Try to find a travel trailer that already has a 50 amp hookup on the side. 30 amp hookup is fine if you're only going to be going to moderate climate areas where you don't have extreme heat or extreme cold, but if you really plan on taking it out and about, you're going to want the 50 amp hookup. If you have two AC units inside of your unit already, then you're probably already going to have 50 amp connections, but in some cases, there are already units with one AC that are prepped for a second AC, and they go ahead and run a 50 amp connection to your RV. But a 50 amp connection is definitely something you should look for on your first travel trailer. I wouldn't be too concerned about the bike rack. A lot of times people don't even use the bike rack when they have it. If you really think you have a need for that extra cargo or you have bicycles that you're going to be taking with you that you can't simply store inside of your RV or inside of the back of your pickup truck, then this rack can come in handy. But just remember, with the rack down, you're essentially extending the length of your RV by about three feet. Even though this specific model, and most travel trailers actually don't come with LED lighting, I would generally look for one that does. If you can't get it, again, not make or break. Now you probably see this extend retract button right here. That is for the stabilizer jacks. This specific unit is gonna have front and rear stabilizer jacks. They're underneath the coach. You can see it right there. And that's simply to help stabilize the unit when you're at a campground. Those are really nice to have, especially if you can find a unit that has an electric version of them. This is a prime example of a pretty small storage area for an RV. As you can see, it has a wooden floor, even though it's an aluminum framed RV, but this unit just doesn't have that much storage. You really couldn't even fit a lawn chair in here. You might be able to fit fishing poles, tackle, some extra pillows, maybe large umbrellas, things like that, but this is not a large storage area. Again, if they have a unit with the solid step system or the step above system, I would definitely opt for that over these metal steps that just don't feel that stable when you step on them. One thing I didn't point out earlier but is nice about this unit is that it has a really nice wide door system on it, so it's not as narrow as some travel trailers. If you can get your unit with a residential kitchen faucet, that's also really nice. A lot of them have this silver plastic material that's designed to look like it's residential, but this is actually residential. One of the quick ways of telling is just tapping it, and you can tell how it's actual stainless steel. A big question people have is gas electric or simply electric refrigerator. I prefer gas electric because you can use it off of propane whenever you're not in an area where you really have power to power your inverter, but if you have power and you're at a campground where you're always going to have power, a residential style refrigerator might be preferable. It does cool faster, it's less temperamental to having a perfectly level RV, and it looks better. In my opinion, it is a cleaner look. If you don't need a bunkhouse, if you don't need a separate room specifically for kids, I would definitely opt for a rear living room floor plan with opposing slides. The amount of space you get here is just significantly larger, but not only that, it's much more comfortable feeling. It feels much more residential. It feels more like you want to escape into your RV if it's cold outside, like you can spend more time in your RV. And of course, the more time you spend in your RV, the better the purchase, the better the value you're getting, or the better the return on your investment. So that's definitely something you want to consider when buying an RV is how comfortable does it feel? Does it feel like an interior that you really would want to spend time in? And this particular floor plan does. It delivers on that very well. A feature that hasn't made it to the travel trailer side yet is a Whisper Quiet AC system. So one of the things that would be negative about this specific unit, if you're needing to run your AC system, is that you're going to hear it. 
It's specifically placed right above your living room, and when this thing is on, it's not going to be quiet. It's going to be relatively loud, and you'll have to talk over it. So if you have the ability to have them plug it in and let you hear out sounds, I'd recommend that, because that could actually be something that's important to you. Pretty much all your mid-price travel trailers and up are going to come with some type of an electric fireplace. They look really nice. They add definitely a coziness feel to the living room area. So I'd recommend finding one with it if you can find one. It's only about $100, but I would definitely recommend you upgrade to a porcelain toilet. Anybody who has one can probably comment on that because it's a night and day difference over a plastic toilet. Once again, get inside of the shower and see how large it is, see if it's comfortable, see if you have enough head clearance room, and just make sure that you have enough room to get inside the shower and use it comfortably because this is something you're going to use probably every single day, maybe several times a day, and you want to make sure that you don't regret your purchase solely because you can barely fit inside of your shower. I wouldn't really base your purchasing decision on plastic faucets that are in your bathroom, mainly because these can be swapped out really, really inexpensively, like 25 or 35 bucks on Amazon. And quite frankly, this isn't really something that should ultimately matter at the end of the day. Now, if you're paying 60, 70, $80,000 for a fifth wheel, I definitely recommend that they put a higher end unit in, but on your travel trailers, especially in that $35,000 and below range, I wouldn't really make a big deal about the faucet that's in the master bathroom. And finally, if the travel trailer you're looking at has an option for a king-size bed, get it. Just having that extra space, having the extra size inside of your master bedroom can make all the difference in the world in terms of comfort. Going to bed at night, waking up in the morning, and just feeling like you're on vacation as opposed to really cramped inside of a small RV. So if you're looking for travel trailers and you would prefer a king-size bed, try to find a floor plan that can accommodate that. Front storage is also a big deal. If you can't carry all the clothes and all the things that you need, it's going to make it less enjoyable. This unit's really nice because it does have a very large front cap storage area. Even though the storage underneath it, which is that outside storage area, isn't that large and it's actually quite pathetic, the storage you get in the master closet makes up for it so you can carry a lot of the things that you might need in the closet itself. And if you have a pickup truck, you can put a lot of the things that you might need in the bed of your pickup truck. Now the final question people might have about a travel trailer of this size, which is right at 36 and a half feet overall length, is what type of truck do I need to tow it? Well, you're going to have right at around 1,500 pounds of tongue weight on this specific trailer. So right off the bat, you're going to need a truck that can support the weight of all its occupants plus an additional 1,500 pounds of cargo. You're going to want a weight distribution system for it as well, as well as a sway control system. On a trailer of this size, I would only recommend a three-quarter ton truck or larger. Basically an F-250, a Chevy 2500, a GMC 2500, or a Ram 2500 or greater. If you're wondering if a dually is overkill, I don't think so. If you have a dually towing something like this, it's just going to counteract the possibility of sway impacting your truck and your trailer as much. Remember, this isn't a gooseneck trailer. This isn't a boat. Air doesn't travel around it like it does with those. This is a wall, and air is going to hit it. It's going to want to make the front of the trailer push out, and it's going to want to create a pivot point between the front of the trailer and the back of your truck, thus creating sway. So naturally, the longer the wheelbase truck, the wider the patch of tire that you have touching the ground, and the heavier the truck is really going to help in counteracting sway. Plus, it's going to give you that extra headroom for cargo capacity and other things that you may need. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you take a moment to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, everyone.